Alright, welcome back to another video here at TG Engineering. Today we're going to go through the engineering process of injection moulding. Okay, this is a typical injection moulding machine. This is a bowler. It's a Chinese machine. Okay, a bit a bit different to, uh, to some of the machines people are used to seeing. Okay, but we've dipped our toes in the water and so far we're very impressed. Okay, it's a nice machine. It does what it says on the tin and all our products are good. Alright, typical things that can be made from an injection moulding machine. Well, Anything plastic in essence, okay, but maybe not things like plastic bottles, that's blow moulding, a different technique, okay. Injection moulding is very much like plastic chairs, um, alarm boxes that you might see on houses, okay. We've got kids toys, particularly Lego, most people resonate with Lego, that's, that's made out of injection moulding, that's what this kind of machine here will make and manufacture. And many more things, okay. I'm sure whatever you're looking at through this lens on here, your TV, your your computer, whatever it might be, will have something on there that is injection moulded. Okay, an injection moulded plastic part. All right, let's dive into the machine. Let's see what it is and how it happens. Okay. All right, people's perception on injection moulding and the principle of injection moulding is very simple. Okay, and the reason it's simple is because we take plastic pellets, we warm them up, we wet them like liquid, we pump them into a cavity, we let the cavity set, and we eject it off the machine. And hey ho, you get a plastic part. Very simple, all right, that's what people think. In essence, it's not simple at all. It's quite a complex process, okay? And, and that's what we're gonna go through with you today on exactly how this process happens and how we end up with, with parts just like this in our hands at the end, okay? All right, onto the machine. Let's start at this side. The machine's three main, main bits, okay? We've got the clamp, this is at this end, okay? We've got the mould, this is where the, the mould sits, the mould is what has the cavity of the plastic part in. Okay, that sits here right in the centre through this glass here. Alright, and then we've got the injection unit. The injection unit is where all the business happens with the plastic before we inject it into the machine. Let's have a closer look. Alright, we'll start with the injection end, okay, the injection unit. We start with things like these, plastic pellets, okay. This particular material is called ABS, alright. ABS is a consumer grade, it's, it's, it's a nice easy grade to mould with. Relatively simple, this is a white ABS, okay, we're making currently alarm parts with that, uh, the indoor alarm parts, and we take this material and we put it into a hopper, okay? Now, at the back of that hopper we have a dryer because ABS needs to be dried, we need to get the moisture out of that material so we can make the product just as good as it needs to be. From the hopper there's a throat here, okay, that material is going to drop into the throat and into this, what we call the barrel. This here is your injection molding barrel, okay? Now in that barrel, this material needs to go from pellets to like water, alright, before we can inject it into that mould in there. So, what's in there? Well we've got a reciprocating sprue, okay, that means it's large at the front and quite small at the back and it has flights on it, okay. As the material is loaded in, yes, it's going to get filled in that barrel, okay, and it's, uh, what's happening is the screw's turning, okay, and as it's turning that material is going further and further up that barrel, barrel okay. Now, them flights and the difference in screw in terms of its diameter is causing shear heat. Now with shear heat and the added heat of what we have around here, heater bands, okay, them two things together are causing that material to go fluid, okay? A very light like, sticky honey if you will, alright? Now as it gets right up to the other end of the screw and becomes very viscous and light water, okay, and we get what we, we call our shot weight. Now our shot weight is how heavy the part is we're going to mould. Okay, it'll stop screwing, it'll wait until we tell it to obviously in the program, okay? And then it's going to move on to the next stage. It's going to plunge that material, very much like, um, how do people describe it? Like a syringe when, you put, when, you push, when you're giving your kids some cow pot and you push the syringe and it you know, fires out the other end. That's the exact same process here where we're pushing it into the mould, the cavity, the empty cavity of what we would like to mould, okay? Let's go and have a look at that. We're now at the mould, we're now at where the mould sits, okay? We've done our injection phase, all the material's nice and me melted and ready to pump in. We've pushed it in, we've pushed it into this empty cavity in this tool and we want to make this product. Okay, there's a few things left to do at this point though. Alright, we need to pack this product out, okay? We don't want this coming with big voids in it, we don't want any air holes in the part. That's called the holding phase. The best way I can describe the holding phase to, to people who aren't involved in injection moulding is if I give you a box, okay, and I've got, I put as many springs in that box as I could, okay, like slight little springs, you know, eventually it's going to get that full, the springs are going to pop out, okay? What we need to do is keep the pressure on them springs, yeah, with more material so that it doesn't allow it to come out and that's how you pack your part out, alright? So that's all in the injection phase, filling this. 
we need holding pressure to keep to keep that material in there while it sets and while it sets as a nice face all right so that's that's what will happen okay so the part's been packed out we've gone through the holding phase we've had the injection phase the holding phase now we're into the cooling phase obviously this material has to cool and set all right the reason it has to set is because it's not going to come out like this if it doesn't all right let it cool that can take anywhere from a few seconds up to a few minutes that really depends on the, the size of the part and the intricacy of the part all right if you're talking about a, a, a part this big it's going to take a lot longer to cool than a part this big all right so we've gone through that stage we're going to open the mold now this will all happen naturally and automatically but i'm going to do it by hand just for this sake so the mold would open there would be a plastic part on there normally if this was molded, okay? And then the mold's going to eject, and that's going to come forward, all right? What's the eject? Well, how do you take a part from sitting on a piece of metal and get it to come down the chute, or get it to a point where a robot can pick it off? You've got to eject it. That's setting our mold design, okay? That's a whole different video altogether. We will, we will cross that at some point. But for now, it's the eject. If, you, if you're looking at plastic parts there in your house behind the lens, eject. What's an eject mark? You'll see little circle, little circle things here, or square indents, or etc. etc. They're the ejectors. They're what pushing this plastic part off that tool. Okay. Now, different parts rely different, you know, different exits. A robot for this part is completely needed because this is a front-facing part for a customer. It's going to sit in somebody's house. All right. If that was to allow to drop and hit the floor, hit the chute, hit anything like that. You're going to get scratches as you can see here this is just a sample okay so we need a robot now that's nice and easy nice and easy explained in further video we can go into more detail of how a jet works how robots work how all this process works that's a nice easy explanation the last last setting and you can't see much of it because of the covers at the minute is the clamp okay the clamp is what holds it all together while we're injecting that plastic in all right now you know what, what 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 does it need to hold it together for well the pressure created from that injection unit to pump this plastic in okay will push that tool apart if there is no counter pressure at that side so that is what the clamp is different machines have different clamp rates okay a machine that's making this at the minute could probably run on a hundred and fifty ton okay and that's fine at the minute because of machine selection and what I've got running elsewhere in the factory it's running on a 230 ton that's also fine you chop and change for what you've got going on in the shop at the time okay different jobs smaller jobs might only require a 20 ton machine bigger jobs that make we used to make a tumble try a tumble dryer back okay with a big back end of a tumble dryer it ran on a 480 ton it's equivalent to having about 480 minis sat on top of you in terms of pressure all right it's huge okay but the part was about that big it was huge okay it wasn't that big and that's why there's different machines for different products as a whole about video that sort of covers in a very very cut down way what injection molding is and how we manufacture parts like this okay going forward we are going to look at these in more detail we'll look at the clamp we'll look at the tool and the tool design we'll look at the injection molding unit we'll show you some purge coming out we'll try and show you as much as we can but I just thought I'd give you an overview of what's happening in the whole surround. And not to forget, we'll show you the beauty, the robot, what gives you consistent cycle time, how we set it up, how we go about picking parts up from the machine, how we get it to the back of the machine ready for packaging, okay? There we have it, that's an overround view of injection molding and how it happens here on site. All right, I'm Sam at TG Engineering Plastics. Why don't you visit our website and buy some of our products, tgplastics.com. Thank you.